So earlier this week, I looked at the fact that the navigation start event as of Angular 6 provides the ability to differentiate between imperative navigation, such as the user clicking on a link, and pop state navigation, such as the user clicking the back or forward buttons or changing the URL manually. Now with the ability to differentiate between these two navigation styles, I wanted to revisit my scroll restoration and uh, restoring polyfill that allows scroll offsets to be recorded and restored as the user navigates throughout the application. Now, the navigation start event was augmented in Angular 6 because Angular built some of that behavior as a native aspect of the Angular router. But uh, they're not quite the same thing, and I have actually this demo both with the scroll attention behavior, or scroll attention playful, and Angular's native behavior to show you the difference. So first let's look at the Angular one so we can see kind of what the, the baseline is. So this is the native Angular application. And here I have a couple of sections and they scroll. And um, what you can see is that there's a, there's a delay in the loading of the data. And that's because like any real world single page application, I have asynchronous data loading. And I need to be able to manage that um, in the lifecycle of my application. Now section D, you'll notice it's just static. It loads instantly. And then I have these secondary and tertiary navigations here with uh, detailed pages as well. So it's a, it's a non-trivial app, but I think it's a realistic, uh, it is sufficiently complicated to be uh, representative of realistic apps. Let's see how the native behavior works. So if I scroll here down, and now say I go to section B, and now let's hit the back button, you'll notice that it doesn't reinstate scrolling of A because A has asynchronous data loading. So by the time that the data is loaded, Angular has already tried to restore the scroll, but there's not sufficient amount of content to allow for that scroll. Now, another issue that we run into in Angular is that if we have secondary navigation, it affects the window even when it shouldn't. So for example, I've, I've scrolled down an A here in the primary viewport, and now I click through in a secondary outlet, you'll see that the primary outlet also scrolls back to the top, even though it had nothing to do with this navigation. Another issue that we run into is that if we go down to the bottom of C where we have a tab navigation, what you'll see is that when I click into one of the tabs, again, I also jump back to the top, right? So there's no concept of like keeping the navigation offset at the tab level. Um, now, one thing that I don't really have a good demonstration of here is that the D is static, right? So if I scroll down in D and then I go to C and then we go back, you'll see that the D is scrolled. And that's because this is truly static, meaning that in the Angular component definition, these values are already hard-coded in the template. Now, what I don't demonstrate here is that even if these are hard-coded in the Angular component as a variable and then rendered into the template with something like an ng4, this won't work, meaning it won't restore the scroll position because even the uh, step of having to unroll the data into the template through a directive prevents the scroll from being restored in time or prevents the content from being applied to the template prior to the scroll restoration. So essentially with the native Angular behavior, we have some ability, right? I can go to C and then I go back to D and that works. Um, but we don't have things like a secondary scroll, right? Where I go back, right? I'm at the top of this list. We also scroll inappropriately the content of the primary when I mess with the secondary and so on and so forth. There's, a, there's quite a number of limitations. So let's now contrast that with my uh, polyfill that builds on top of the same navigation start event that Angular is also building on. And let's just uh, demonstrate the different behaviors before we look at any of the, any of the um, output. So again, we have some asynchronous data loading, right? You can see it here, right? We can see it in C. And D. Again, this is exactly the same demo, all the same things. So let's take a look at how the scroll works. So let's go A, let's scroll halfway, let's go B, let's scroll full way, and let's go C, let's keep C at the top, and then D will scroll down halfway, and let's go back home. So now let's do back. We get D to the, to the halfway, C I think we left at top, right? B I think was all the way at the bottom, right? and there's the scroll, and I think A was like halfway. And there we go, boom, so that's working, even with the data load. Um, subsequently, if we just scroll down to the tab, you'll see that 
the tab stayed in the same place. If I do it here, you see I have to jump up to the top of the tab, but then it doesn't go all the way back to the top of the page. Now, probably one of the biggest things though is that the secondary navigation you'll see has nothing to do with the primary navigation. I can navigate between the secondaries without the primary changing at all. And in fact, if I scroll, let's go, let's go down to the bottom of the secondary and down to the bottom of the uh, tertiary, and let me click into one and then click into the other and go home. And if I click back now, what you'll see is that we actually maintain the scroll offsets of the secondary router outlets as well, including the primaries. So um, quite a bit going on there. And you can see from the uh, output that we're recording scroll offsets, not just at the window, but at the secondary outlets as well. So for example, here, um, let's clear it, hold on. So if I'm, let's say I'm halfway in the secondary, halfway in the tertiary, and let's say a quarter of the way in the primary, and then I go to A, you'll see that I'm recording the scroll offsets for those three elements, the primary, uh, the tertiary, and the secondary here. And that's why when I go back, I can restore halfway, halfway, a quarter way, four, and you'll see here attempting to reapply page state in pop state navigation. And you'll see that's for the window, the tertiary, and the secondary router outlets. Um, so again, it's quite a different behavior than the native scroll restoration in Angular. And uh, there's, there's quite a bit of code behind it, but let me just quickly show you uh, what I think is the most interesting part. So here's the scroll polyfill service, the retained scroll polyfill service, and it has essentially two main components. It has the um, monitoring of the scroll event and then the monitoring of the navigation event. So let's jump down to the scroll. Uh, setup scroll binding. So in the setup scroll binding, what you'll see is that I'm listening to scroll events on the entire DOM. So as opposed to the native Angular behavior, which just records the window offset at the point time of navigation, I'm actually listening for scroll events and then recording the scrolled elements throughout the life cycle of the application. And that's because now if we jump up to the uh, navigation, when we set up the router bindings and we start listening for the navigation start event and the navigation end event, that's when I start recording the offsets of those scrolled elements and then potentially restoring uh, scroll offsets if I'm navigating via pop state with a restored navigation ID. So in the start date, in the navigation start, um, what you'll see is I take those scrolled elements, I translate those into a page state, which is essentially a combination of CSS selectors and offsets. And then I assign that to the current page state. Now in the navigation end event, what I do is I create a new page state, right? And then I look to see if we're restoring a previous state. And if we're restoring a previous state and I have that cached in memory, then I go ahead and I apply that page state to the DOM. So this takes those CSS selectors and the offsets, checks the DOM for those elements, and then tries to reapply those offsets. Now, Angular does this with the, with the primary viewport, and it does it at the time of navigation. But if we jump up to what this method is actually doing, this method is quite a bit more opinionated about how it wants to do this. And what it actually does is it sets up an interval which will run for a configured cadence and will run for a configured duration. And essentially what it does is it loops over the selectors in the pending page state, tries to find them in the current DOM, and then if it can find them, it tries to scroll to the given offset. So it will keep doing this by default. I think it's like every 50 milliseconds after navigation for up to three seconds, it will try to find the element. If it finds the element, it'll try to scroll it to the previous offset. If it can scroll it to the previous offset, it deletes it from the pending state. So I'm not constantly polling when I don't need to. Uh, but the point is that this interval gives the application some wiggle room to load data either from an in-memory cache or over an HTTP request and apply it to the DOM before the scroll restoration is considered complete. And that's why if we jump back to the browser here, right? that's why if I go to A and I scroll halfway down A and then I go to D and I scroll back to A, 
even though that data loaded asynchronously, I'm polling the DOM trying to reapply. Right, so you can see uh, attempting to reapply, and here's the things that I'm looking for. Uh, and then here we see successfully reapplied scroll offsets to DOM. And if we look at that uh, here, this is when we get to essentially the object for the pending page state is empty. I say successfully reapplied scroll offsets to DOM. Um, let's, let's get just a more exciting one, right? So we have A, we'll go secondary and tertiary. Right now, if I go home, right, we see that all three of these are now in the recorded, so these are cached in memory. And now if I go back, you'll see that we're attempting to reapply page state for these three elements. And you can see that I have scrolled secondary, scrolled tertiary, scrolled primary. And again, we have that successfully reapplied scroll offset to DOM. And that's because it was able to iterate over these things, pull against the act of DOM, and then, and then, um, uh, reinstate the offsets, delete that object, and then it was uh, empty at this point. And um, and just so that you, so one thing to be concerned about perhaps is that this interval will continue going on for too long, but if we look at this timer, what we can see is that in the navigation start event, we go ahead and we clear this timer. So we won't poll unless we need to be polling, uh, and we're pretty smart about when we need to be polling. So I could, for example, Let's go forward, and then I'll go back, back, and you'll see that it uh, it didn't try to it didn't it didn't output this twice. It only output once for the most uh, recent successfully reapplied scroll offsets, not for the the one that we just skipped over with the second back. Anyway, um, what's nice about this approach one is that I think it's fairly powerful, and I think it's fairly intuitive in terms of its behavior and the way that I would like the application to behave, especially with asynchronously loaded data. But on top of that, what's great is that it's basically a transparent drop-in in the application. If we jump over to the module for our app, this retain scroll polyfill for root is essentially the extent to which the application knows about this behavior. I'm saying it's a module, I'm including it, I'm saying that when I reinstate previous offsets, I want to pull the DOM for up to three seconds, and I want to pull every 50 milliseconds. Other than that, my components don't have to know about it, my router outlets don't have to know about it, nothing has to know about it, there's no special notation in the templates. This is all just inherently handled by the polyfill, totally hands-off, totally transparent. And, uh, and that's I think, is pretty exciting. And um, anyway, I, this is not a perfect solution, um, but I think it is a powerful step in a direction that, uh, that has nice implications. Um, and if nothing else, it was just a lot of fun code to think about and, uh, and a way to build on top of the new navigation start event uh, properties that were added in Angular 6.